Hi, it's Chester Topple at Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at using option buttons within charts to change the data series that the chart displays. So we're going to recreate this chart. We've got three sets of data that we potentially want to show in the chart, one for income, one for outgoings, and one for profit. And when I click on these radio buttons, it selects which series the chart actually displays. OK, so I haven't got a chart on this sheet, but I have got my data. I'm going to recreate that chart. Now, to get the option buttons, you need to have the developer tab on your ribbon. If it doesn't appear on your ribbon. This is how to get it. Right click on one of the other tabs, customize the ribbon, and then you can tick this little option here, developer and that will make it display on the ribbon. On the Developer tab, go to the Insert button, and you're going to use Form Controls here, not ActiveX Controls. And there's our little Option button, but before you put any Option buttons onto your worksheet, you'll need to use this, the Group box, and that kind of then associates these radio buttons together with, a, uh, with an option button or radio button, as I call it there, only one button can be selected at a time. If you don't put it within a group box, you won't get that, that actual functionality. You'll end up being able to select more than one radio button at a time, which really won't work for this scenario. So anyway, the lesson is start with the group box. So I'm gonna draw it here. Now you can give the group box a name if you really want. So let's put in here uh, source data. And then I can start putting in my option buttons. So I'll put the first one in and just click. Make sure you get them completely within this group box. And if you've done it correctly, you should only be able to select one button at a time. Let's hope that's the case here. Yes, that is the case. You're probably going to want to align and distribute these so they look neat and tidy. So if you right click on the first one, control right click on the other ones, that'll get selected. So then if you go up to the Format tab on your ribbon, now this is slightly off the recording screen, so I'm going to drag it over so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to a line there, distribute horizontally, and then I can align top. And then I'm just using my right arrow key there just to move them across nicely. And pretty nicely arranged within that group box. The next thing I'm going to do is group the group box together with the option button so I can move them around the sheet nice and easily. So I'm going to select group box, hold down control, select the option buttons. Up to format under drawing tools and there's our group button. And we can group them. So now I should be able to kind of drag this around and all the option buttons stay in their place within the group box. These option buttons actually create an output which I want to link to a particular cell in my sheet. I'm just going to move this back over a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. What I want to do is output the value from these option buttons to this cell here. And to do that, what I can do is right click on the first option button, go to Format Control. And this brings up this dialog box. So I want to create a cell link to this cell here, B12, and I click on OK. Now what you'll see is, is with the first option button selected, it returns 1, the second option button selected 2, 3, etc, etc. The last thing I need to do is, well, last thing I need to do with these option buttons is to rename them. So this one should be income. So if I right click on that, and then I can edit this text. 
So this one will be income and then click outside. So I'll do the other option buttons for you and then come back to you. Okay, so I've got my three option buttons named, one for income, which turns the value one, one for outgoings, which returns the value two, and the last one for profit, which returns the value three. Now the chart is actually gonna get its data, not from these data sets up here, but from here. And what we've got to do is we've got to get the correct set of data, either income outgoings or profit, from up here into this little table here. And the data that it will actually collect will depend entirely on the number displayed here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the choose function. If you've not used the choose function before, it's really quite easy to understand. The first argument is index number. Now, if the index number is one, it will return value one. And if the index number is two, it will return value two. Now, our index number will be the output from our option buttons, B12. So at the moment it's three. And what I'm gonna say is, if the option button is one, or the index number is one, the value one would be our heading income, comma. Value two would be outgoings, comma. Value three will be profit. So I close the bracket there and press enter. I get profit because this number is three. If I choose income here, that changes to one. So it returns the first, choose returns the first value, which is income. The actual values for the chart can use exactly the same method, choose. So index number will be our option button output. Value one will be the value from income for quarter one. Value two from outgoings, quarter one. And three will be values for profit in quarter one. Press enter and then I can if I fix this. So I pressed F4 there to create an absolute reference for the option button output. And I want to do that so I can just copy this across. And you can see it's picking up the correct values for each of the four quarters for income. So if I press outgoings, it changes the values to the outgoing values and profit, you've guessed it, it picks it up for the profit. We need some headings. Our little table here, so I'm going to just refer to the headings on the first income table. Copy those across, and also the year there. So we've got our complete table now for our chart. What we can now do is create our chart from this data set. So I'll select those cells there, insert column chart. Okay, so if I press these little option buttons, you can see changing the data here. So it obviously changes the data in our chart. Now we still need to do quite a few things in here within our chart to make it look good and make the data really clear. So let's move on to formatting and playing around with our chart. I'm gonna create a chart title in this cell here. And the chart title needs to change depending on what series of data is being displayed in the chart. So I'm going to say equals this cell here, so profit, income, or outgoings. And I'm going to concatenate that with just a little bit of text. I'm going to say X, Y, Z, limited. Press enter. So profit XYZ limited, income XYZ limited, outgoings XYZ limited. Now I want this chart title to pick up whatever appears in that cell there. The way to do that is to select the ch uh, chart title box, click into the formula bar, press equals, click in that cell, press enter. And you can see now it becomes a dynamic chart title. One thing I don't like about the chart at the moment is that depending on which series I select, you get a different vertical axis, which makes it harder to compare your actual data. 
So essentially I want to, this to remain fixed, to have a minimum value and a top value that's the same for whatever data series I'm displaying. So I'm going to do that down here in this y-axis table and I'm going to create two coordinates, one for the minimum value, one for the maximum value and this then I will add as a new series to my chart. So I'm going to start with min, that's the minimum value in our data. which is minus 11,547, and then max. Do the same thing. Picking out the data. It's not necessary to leave those gaps, by the way. Um, you can have these values next to each other. So anyway, I now have the two data points for my new series. We now need to add this new series to our chart. To do that, select your chart, go up to design, select data. So we've all got, already got one series, that's the series of values that are appearing in our chart. We need to add another series. Series name will be y-axis. Series values will be these values here. Click on OK. Click on OK. And you can see that it's picked up these new values as a separate series in a different color. We want to change these columns to a scatter graph, actually. So if I select that series within my chart, go to design, change chart type. Now we've got a combo chart here. So you need to make sure combo is selected there. Series one, we're using a clustered column the y-axis series we're going to change to a scatter graph. And that gives me two points there. And then I'm going to actually make these markers invisible. Now to do that, just right click format data series. And again, I'm going to have to move the screen over a little bit so you can see exactly what is going on. What I do is I go to this little paint bucket, then to marker, and I don't want a marker, so marker options, none. And you'll see if I drag these across that the markers have in fact disappeared. Now, if I choose a different series, you can see, well, let me just deselect those markers because they were appearing, they wouldn't appear normally. If I select these radio buttons now, you can see that the y-axis stays the same whichever series I'm displaying in my chart. The next thing I want to do is to move these category labels so they appear at the top of the chart. At the moment it's not particularly clear when we have a negative value which quarter we're looking at so it'd be the, a really good idea to do that. I am however going to have to tweak the layout of my screen because you're not going to be able to see the options how we're currently recording the screen. So give me a moment and I'll get back to you. Okay, so what you need to do is to right click on the horizontal category axis, go to format axis. That will bring up this task pane and the section where well, you need to be on the axis options button at the top here. And then you need to expand the labels section here. And then you've got a label position option, drop down menu, and you want to choose high and that puts the category axis labels at the top of the chart there. Now I think it would be nice to have some sort of background that visually kind of connects the chart to the option buttons here. So I'll insert a shape. Let's go for the rectangle shape. Draw it over the chart. Change the background to gray, outline to none, and then center the back and a bit of tweaking. I think it looks much nicer like that. Makes it obvious that these option buttons belong to this chart. Lastly, I just want to show you that you can, you can use other controls on this developer tab to do exactly the same thing. So we'll use a combo box to do exactly what our 
option buttons are currently doing. Now the drop down box will need, it's going to essentially have a list of values, income, outgoings and profit, and it needs a source for that. So what we'll do is we'll create that list in consecutive sales down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the developer tab, insert and combo box, draw my combo box up here, right click, format control, input range will be these values here, cell link, just like with the option buttons I need a cell to link to, click on OK. So now what I'm going to do in this drop down box is select income, it puts a one in there, and again, just like the option buttons, because of the choose function, it selects the correct data series. Outgoings will do the same, and also with profit. So this is a very neat way of being able to show multiple series that can't really be shown in one chart, unless you can switch between those series using some sort of control. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thanks very much for listening. It's been Chester Tudwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training.